Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about research designs, very basic concept through Research Onion. Uh, a lot of our students, when they are starting into the research, they want to know how do exactly they design their studies or what are the things that they should consider while planning their study. So this video would help my students be guided through that. So let's look into what does it mean by a research design. Research design is basically a master plan or you could say a basic plan of uh, how your research would collect the data, make the measurements and how the data would be analyzed uh, to answer the research questions that you have created. Now, let's look into the research onion step by step. It's a concept that was proposed by Saunders and it's a very famous book or very famous design model that he presented. So it starts with the first step of philosophy. So what does it mean by philosophy? Philosophy means that what are the basic fundamental ideas of the researcher through which the research would be conducted. Some of the very basic philosophical choices can be that you choose to have a positivist standpoint or you can have an interpretivist standpoint. Usually the positivists, they believe that things are, the concepts are independent of people or they can be observed and measured objectively. For example, like if you want to measure the temperature, you can easily take a thermometer and you can measure the temperature. And that's the concept that the positivists have, that you can scientifically measure a phenomena. On the other hand, the interpretivists, they have a belief that the phenomena, it exists with the actors in the society. For example, happiness, like, you know, happiness that I'm feeling can be only described by myself. So how, what level of happiness I'm feeling or how I'm feeling when I'm feeling happy, that can only be discovered through a person. So you cannot detach a phenomena from a person and happiness cannot be measured objectively. You cannot measure it on a scale or a thermometer or anything. So this is the difference between the philosophy of two different sides, like two different extremes, I would say. There are many other choices as well, but these are the extreme cases or extreme choices. Now, next level within the research onion is the approach to theory development. Now, again, I'll talk about the two extremes over here. One is deductive approach, and then we have the other one that is called inductive approach. Now, when we say we are using deductive approach, it means there is a theory that already exists. We're going to test that theory after collecting data and we would say, we would come up with a result whether the theory upholds or the theory is not supported by the data. On the other hand, when we talk about the inductive approach, we develop the theory. So what does that mean? We will select a sample and we will take the observations from there. And based on those observations, we would develop a theory and we would propose that this is how the phenomena is. So this is the difference between the two different approaches. Generally speaking, the deductive approach goes along with the positivism and inductive approach goes along with interpretivism. Next, we have methodological choices. The two major methodological choices are quantitative and qualitative. If you can express your data in numbers, you can make a statistical analysis on them then it means you're using quantitative approach and it goes along with deductive approach. And if your data cannot be analyzed in terms of number, it's made up of words, expressions, um, feelings or statements, then it means you're dealing with qualitative methodology. And generally speaking, it goes along with interpretivist philosophy and inductive uh, approach of theory de development. Next stage comes for strategy. Now, it means like what mode are you using for conducting this research? What's, what's your strategy? 
whether you are going with the survey or you're going to do an experiment or you're going to do interviews or any other strategy that you can come up with. There are a variety of strategies that can be used in both the extremes that we already talked about. So there's no specific strategy for any one methodology or any one approach. But generally speaking, the surveys with Likert scales are usually used with a deductive approach and interviews and observations and experiments are mostly used with inductive approach, although we use some experiments in the positivist approach as well. Moving on, <clears throat> time horizon. Now, the two major choices that we have in the time horizon are uh, cross-sectional data collection or longitudinal data collection. What does it mean by cross-sectional? It means that in one point in time, you're collecting data from different people or different subjects. Whereas when we talk about the longitudinal approach, it means that you are collecting data from one subject at different points in time. Uh, a combination of these two uh, approaches to time can be that you're going for a panel data collection, which means you're collecting data from a variety of subjects at different points in time. And that results in panel data analysis. Next, it's about the techniques and procedures that you would be using for your data analysis. There can be a variety of data analysis procedures that can be used in each approach, each methodological choice. But commonly, when we are talking about the quantitative data that is for the deductive approach, we use uh, the statistical analysis that can be regression, SEM analysis, or some other kind of, you could say, advanced statistical analysis. But when we talk about the qualitative side, it's it can be uh, framework analysis, it can be thematic analysis, it can be textual analysis, it can be narrative analysis. So these are the different kind of analysis that we use for the qualitative side, side that is usually used for inductive approach. So this is a little brief on what is research onion and what does it mean by having a study design. All these points that we have talked about here, they go into the methodology of your research paper or your thesis. If you're talking about thesis, then each of these points that we have talked about would be discussed in detail. But if you're talking about a research paper, this all would be covered in just one short paragraph. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions related to the Research Onion, you may please ask them in the comments. Uh, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any future videos. See you in other videos.